Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. And I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And hey, if you haven't checked out our videos before, feel free to peruse. There's sure to be something there that interests you in the yes. healthcare sort of industry. Yeah, and thanks for all the support. You guys are really helping us uh, grow our channel and get the information out there. All right, so what are we talking about today? Today we're going to talk about shoulder fracture. Okay. Okay, broke my shoulder. Okay. Well, let's start at the beginning. So when someone says they broke their shoulder, what bone did they usually break? Most of the time, when someone says they broke their shoulder, they're talking about their humerus. Is there anything funny about it? No. No. Nothing funny about a shoulder fracture. So most of the time talking about the humerus, sometimes you could fracture your glenoid, which is the socket. Right. Um, or uh, you could fracture even your scapula which yes. is sort of the triangular bone at the back. Where your glenoid is attached. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and you can check out some of our other videos where we've talked about the anatomy of a shoulder. But today we're talking about the proximal humerus fracture. Proximal humerus fracture. Broke my shoulder, the most common way to break your shoulder. Okay, so who gets, who gets this fall? People who fall. Yes, I would agree. And, and any fall, sometimes as we're older, it could be a fall from a height. Yeah. Or it could be a fall from a roof or off your motorbike or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, you could definitely get it from a, a, a high fall or sometimes if you have osteoporosis yep. uh, and you have uh, bones that break easily you could get it from a fall from a standing height and it's a very very common injury in uh, elderly populations especially in Canada in the winter when there is a flash freeze ice covered ice. with just a little dusting of snow and then whoop. yeah yeah okay so do people typically fall right on their shoulder or do they fall into an outstretched hand? Sometimes you fall on your shoulder, but usually you put out your arm to try Agreed. and block yourself and you end up breaking your shoulder. Um, and it, it's quite involved if that happens to you. Agree. So how do these people present? So they fall and they're like, oh, my shoulder hurts. Yeah, often the shoulder hurts and they can't move their shoulder. Right. There can be swelling associated with it. Yeah. Even some bruising after a while and just a lot of pain. Thankfully, very infrequently nerve damage or numbness or tingling, mm -hmm. um, but that's another thing that can happen. Okay, so you got a sore shoulder, you fell, you get up, or you get some help getting up, or you get an ambulance or whatever, you go to the hospital usually, right? Right, usually you're gonna go to the hospital, usually the emergency room yep. is where people present, sometimes urgent care, occasionally uh, primary care physician's office, but the majority of the time you're presenting to the emergency room, and the emergency room physician is gonna take a history, what yeah. happened, do a physical exam, hey, does this hurt? Yes. Uh, and then order some investigations. Right, and the investigation of choice? X-ray. Yeah, have we taught you nothing? Yeah. Everyone in uh, they're screaming at the screen right now, just get an x-ray. X-ray. Yeah. Hopefully you you're all pointing and saying X-ray, X-ray. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so do we happen to have an X-ray? Yes. Okay. okay. So what are, so what are we looking at here? Okay, so here is an X-ray of a shoulder. You can see the humerus, yep. you can see the glenoid, yep. and you can see at the top of the humerus some fracture lines. Right, and they usually show up as dark lines, and a lot of times when you have a proximal humerus fracture, it's in a specific number of pieces. So mm -hmm. it's either two pieces, so like a ball and then the shaft, three pieces where the ball and the shaft and then the greater tuberosity is the third piece, and then sometimes you can have a four part where the lesser tuberosity is a small piece. Right, so they can have a varying number of pieces of bone that broke yes. and varying amounts of displacement. Displacement just means how much of the bone moved from where it was supposed to be. And as you can imagine, the further they are from where they're supposed to be, the higher the chances that recovery is gonna be longer or more complicated or potentially even require an operation. Okay, you said the O word. The O word. So, operation, what are some treatment options for shoulder fractures? So usually the first line treatment would be uh, something to help immobilize the shoulder in some way. So as you can imagine, it would be very hard to cast your shoulder. You'd have to be around the arm and around the chest. So usually it's a sling, and then sometimes they'll actually put a splint that goes up onto the shoulder, like a fiberglass splint that goes into the axilla. But usually it's a sling, sometimes a special sling that goes around your neck and hangs off your wrist called a collar and cuff. Um, and you're encouraged when you're at home to let it hang. So gravity helps pull those pieces with the tension of the muscles closer to the place where they were originally designed. Whereas if you prop it up on a chair, it actually causes the fracture to displace and actually could alter the healing. Okay, that's a beautiful description Thank of non-operative management okay. of shoulder fractures. A sling, basically. Yes. And always when there's a non-operative treatment option, there is an operative treatment option. Okay, so can we, can we just go back to, to non yeah. Yeah. So how does, how does the follow-up work? So you leave the ER, you get a sling, and then they say, hey, good luck. See that's it. Should be good. 
So a, a follow-up is arranged. So right. Usually it's a follow-up in an orthopedic surgeon's fracture clinic right. at the hospital. My routine is I usually I see them within a week after they break yep. their shoulder in eMERGE. And then I see them at one week, yep. take an x-ray, make sure everything's okay in a good position, uh, put them in a sling. And then I see you at two weeks, okay? Yep. And then after your first two weeks of sort of just watching it, resting, uh, trying to figure out how to sleep at night because it hurts so much when you try and sleep. Ah, good point. I go to weeks two to four. Yep. That's where I teach you some pendulum exercises. Right. I think we have a video that shows some pendulum exercises. I think we do too. It's basically where you bend over a coffee table, let your arm dangle like a pendulum and move it around just like a pendulum gently. Yep. That's weeks two to four. Yep. Weeks four to six, I say do some active uh, some assisted, sorry, passive range of motion. So this is passive range of motion. I take the non-injured arm and get you to move that arm up and down a little yep. bit. Then after week six, we hook you up with, with physiotherapy or physical therapy, where a physical therapist or physiotherapist is going to come and help you move that shoulder and strengthen it up again. Okay. That's a mouthful that's for a, treatment. That's, that's why it lot. takes me six weeks to do I that. I feel like that video took six weeks, yeah. yeah. So that's, it's, a, it's a long, slow process, and, and like Dr. Zalzal said, sleeping is really problematic because when you fall back, then your shoulder rolls back and it causes it to really hurt. So a lot of people will sleep on a couple of pillows, sometimes in a recliner. Recline chair. Be, yeah, recline chair. So um, yeah. yeah, it can be painful, but it usually gets better slowly. Yeah. The bleeding, a lot of times it happens in the shoulder, any bone when they break, they bleed, and that blood will track down. So usually at a week or two, the people come back to the clinic and like, I think I hurt my elbow, my elbow's all yellow and it's purple because it's all tracked down. So all very common, your arm can actually be swollen. Um, so yeah, we just keep an eye out with an x-ray, get you moving, and then get you going. Okay, and then are you good as new after you break your shoulder and it heals? Oh, so I wish that was true. So every now and then, good as new, I think that would be uncommon. The main issue that I would see is, I wouldn't say, some people have pain, because you could have also some rotator cuff pathology or certainly a stiff shoulder that can be painful, but I'd say the biggest thing for me I worry about is range of motion. Yeah. It's a, it's a problem. Stiffness, and I often, you know, Oftentimes the shoulder fracture is a one-way road. You go, you're gone down one way and okay. you can't come back all the way. You can't. You may not get your full range of motion back. No. Sometimes you do and that's super duper, but sometimes you don't get that full range of motion after. You hope you're not in a continuing education class where the policy is raise your hand if you have to go to the washroom. Because you might be doing this. Yeah. So yeah. I would say my goals, and I mentioned this early on to people, is our goal is that you get your hand to your mouth, to the back of your head, hand to your backside, yes. but sometimes beyond 90 degrees can be quite difficult. Not, um, not that you can't get it, not that it's not going to take a lot of hard work and that you can't improve over months and months, but yeah. certainly there is often a, a very specific limitation to terminal range of motion. Yes, I would agree with that. Um, and you do, you do your best, you do a ton of physio and you try and get there, but you might be missing something. Certainly getting your hand on the top of the head yeah. is important because if you're in a bank and a masked man comes in and says, Everybody be cool, this is a robbery, put your hands on your head and nobody gets hurt. You're like, I rub you my want. shoulder, I rub my shoulder, I'm doing my Get best. your hands up. So getting your hands to the top of your head is really important, mostly for hygiene and things like that. Yes. And that's sort of my, my gauge if you're doing okay. So I'll tell you right now, someone's gonna comment if we don't answer this, say, well, well I want full range, I'll, I'll just have surgery then. I'd like to have surgery so that I can get my right, full range of motion that. back. Why, why do you guys not want to do surgery? How come you don't want to operate on Segue into surgery. Surgery certainly is an option for some shoulder fractures. Okay. And we usually determine that by the number of pieces that are broken and how displaced they are. Yes. And uh, the overall health and age of the patient who broke their shoulder. Right. right? If, uh, we have, if we have an elderly person who has a lot of medical comorbidities, so that means other health problems, diabetes, heart disease, recent strokes, things like that, where surgery is very high risk, yep. then we would tend to try and avoid surgery as much as possible yep. for, uh, to, to help the risk benefit ratio stay leaning towards the benefit side. Yes. If we had a young person who's super healthy uh, with no medical conditions, uh, often you'd say, okay, well now at my threshold for surgery is a little bit lower. I, I'll, I'll take that person to the operating room because the chance of something bad happening with the surgery is much lower yeah. and I might be able to make them better with surgery. 
Right. And, and having said that, like most of these fractures can be treated non-operatively, regardless majority, of age or, or problems. Oh my God, the vast majority of shoulder fractures are treated non-operatively. So without getting into too much detail, the, really the treatment options are either to fix the fracture, or sometimes we have to replace the fracture with a shoulder replacement, or sometimes half of a shoulder replacement. We're not gonna get into those details. But Paul, obviously when you have surgery, that guarantees perfect outcome? All the time. Not the case, right? Whenever you have surgery, there's always risks of surgery, and the outcomes are not guaranteed. So do you mean that I could have surgery and I could still have that same motion that you're yeah, talking about? Exactly, you could have surgery and still have stiffness after. Right, and that's just the nature of the bony injury plus the work you have to do during surgery plus the inherent trauma to the soft tissues around the shoulder. Yeah. The shoulder's not particularly forgiving, to be honest no, with you. No, no, I mean, I mean they- Surgically. Yeah, the fracture heals, yep. uh, but oftentimes you can end up with stiffness because you think about the shoulder, it, it's a tricky joint, it's a ball on a very flat socket. Yep. It's a lot of soft tissues holding things, and the range of motion of the shoulder is probably the, a many joint in your body. It is. It's one of the, what has the largest range in any direction. And yep. So it's easy to lose some of that range with an injury. Yep. But still, the majority of people would actually do quite well with both uh, operative and non-operative treatment. Afterwards, um, say at the six or eight week mark, Paul, what, what does it look like after you've started your physiotherapy? Do you get back to some of your normal stuff? Yeah, I think, I think it takes a while to get back to your normal yeah. stuff. Certainly after the first two weeks, the pain goes down where you can start thinking about sleeping in your own bed again. Yep. And then after six weeks when you start the physiotherapy, you see gains pretty quick at the beginning, right? You, when you come out of the sling, you can barely move it, then quickly with some physio, you get a good range, yeah. and then it plateaus, and it takes a long time to get that last bit of range. So I'll, I'll follow people with shoulder fractures, uh, you know, up six months, I'm yes. still watching them improve up to six months. And I tell them, keep doing your exercise. Even if you don't yeah. go to physio, just keep doing it, because yeah. you know, you're walking your arm up the wall or up yeah. the door or whatever, so now, lots of yeah. exercises to do. Walking your arm out the door? No, up, up the door, not right, out yeah. the door. Right. The door. So, that's pretty well shoulder fractures. It's a good summary. It's an injury ideally that you want to avoid. That's the best way to deal with a shoulder fracture is not get one. Yeah, um, definitely. And that means don't slip on ice. Watch out with rugs around the house. Yep. Watch out on the stairs. Uh, slow down. Yeah, right? Just slow things. Slow down. And if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.